Well, good morning, guys. Today we are going to do the famous Haivan Pass here in Vietnam. I'm super excited because I heard about this Haivan Pass for such a long time. It's supposed to be one of the best motorbike ride here in Vietnam with a spectacular view. Apparently, this Haivan Pass became popular after the episode of Top Gear Special Vietnam, which I didn't watch, so I have no idea. But it seems like that the entire world, after watching this episode, wants to come to Vietnam to do the Haivan Pass. See that mountain up there, James? Yep. We're going up there. Right. I'll wait for you at the top. One of the best coast roads in the world. It's called the High Van Pass, and in this place, I had an epiphany. I'm liking this. So we're gonna do it today, we're gonna leave Da Nang, where I am right now, and we're gonna make it to Hue through the Haivan Pass. It's a beautiful sunny weather, so everything seems to be right. And along the journey, I also want to share with you what I learned about riding in Vietnam. Because I ride my motorcycle from Ho Chi Minh, Saigon, in the south of Vietnam, all the way up to Da Nang, where I am right now. And I have observed and learned many things about the driving style here in Vietnam, which is very different from Thailand. And of course, it's very, very different from the West. So I want to share some points with you because I think it's going to be helpful if you're planning to come to Vietnam. So sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Do it. Guys, look at this. Wow. All right, guys, 10 minutes in and I already stopped because I really need a coffee. The one in the hotel was not so good and so strong. So let's get a coffee and this place has an amazing view. So far so good, amazing. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> 80. No baby. 80. Oh wow, you look very good. <laughs> very good. Ciao. <laughs> Amazing, she's eight years old. What a place, it reminds me of the rock in Kosomui. Wow, what a scenery. So let's begin by sharing the first observation about driving in Vietnam. The first interesting thing is that everybody wears a helmet in Vietnam. Compared to Thailand, where some people, especially in the countryside, they don't really wear it. Here, everywhere in Vietnam, they always wear a helmet, which is great. Another thing is that these guys, these kind of guys, like bus, trucks, they are crazy in Vietnam. They don't give a shit about anything. They even cross your road, they come on your side. It's extremely dangerous. They're just reckless. So be extremely careful of bus and trucks. Oh man, look at this. Wow, that one is Dana over right there. Oh, man. 
Alright guys, the Ivan Pass is actually over. I thought it was longer, but in maybe like 20 or 30 minutes, it's already finished. And uh, now it's like kind of flat and I just checked Google Maps and I still have like one hour and a half to arrive to Hue, which I actually check and there is nothing like super spectacular that I want to see. So I don't know if it's worth it to drive like one hour and a half and then come back because I still have my hotel in Da Nang. So I have to come back today. I cannot sleep in, uh, in Hue. Perhaps I just prefer to go back, do the Haivan Pass again on the way back and then just go back to my hotel in Da Nang and just chill out for the rest of the day at the swimming pool or something like that. Don't get me wrong, the Haivan Pass, it's incredible. The view, the scenery, the nature, the road, it's mind-blowing but if you do the vietnam motorbike trip from ho chi minh all the way north you already see some nice roads like this one i, I already had a couple of them actually way longer than the haivan pass which were amazing I mean, I don't really want to give a bad opinion of the Haivan Pass. I was just expecting something a little bit more. Or at least I was just expecting like a longer road, to be honest. So yeah, I don't know what to do. All right, here we are again. Let's, uh, let's go back. Let's do it on the way back. So another thing that I noticed by driving in Vietnam is that Vietnam is popular for like driving like crazy. There are so much traffic. People are like wild. It's very, very dangerous if you don't have experience driving. It's total chaos. But inside the chaos, there is an order because now that I've been here for a month, driving every single day all around Vietnam, I really understand the way of driving of Vietnamese people. Is that basically they, they don't like to stop. They always like to be moving. And instead of stopping, they, they rather just slide inside and just get in the road. So you have to be always constantly careful of like people just cutting the road or just merging into your lane. Or many, many times they just drive on the opposite way. So you're just driving in your lane and then someone is just coming in front of you so it's extremely dangerous but once you understand their way of driving and that they don't want to stop they always try to flow inside the roads and in tra inside the traffic it kind of makes sense and you actually enjoy driving and now I'm really having a lot of fun driving in Vietnam actually Ooh, something big is coming These guys are dangerous. But at the same time, there is a lot of chaos, like traffic, people just cutting each other all the time. But you don't see many accidents. Actually, by staying for a month here, I just see one accident and for the rest, everything was completely fine. While in Thailand, oh man, in Thailand, I see like two or three accidents per day. And then another thing that I noticed is that the traffic lights here in Vietnam, they are very short. They usually last like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maximum 40 seconds. So it's very enjoyable because you're not stuck there for like one minute, two minutes. You always kind of move it's just a short stop and then you continue while in Thailand again I'm making a lot of comparison with Thailand because that's where I drive my motorbike but in Thailand especially in Phuket or Bangkok you have like a two minutes traffic light three minutes traffic like 180 seconds 220 seconds and that's crazy because it's hot and you're stuck there and there is a lot of pollution a lot of traffic so I really like this approach of Vietnam to do like a shorter traffic lights all right let's continue but this is beautiful man, look at this, like pine trees, very nice breeze, very calm. Yeah, I really enjoy this high one pass. Of the entire Haivan Pass, this is probably the, the best part. Very near the peak of the mountain because the first part you go up and then there is the peak and then you start to go down. And this part is definitely the most beautiful. Before I talk shit about the Haivan Pass, but actually it's beautiful, man. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun.
All right, so I'm back in the hotel. It's 12.19. I left at 9.15 in the morning. So basically in three hours, I've done the Haivan Pass by stopping in many places, flying the drone three times, drinking coffee. So I definitely enjoyed the ride and still three hours is nothing. To be honest, I thought it would take the entire day. But final conclusion, is it worth to do the Haivan Pass? I will say so. The view, it's beautiful, especially if you don't do a motorbike trip in Vietnam and that's the only trip with the motorbike that you do. You will love it. I mean, you will have the time of your life. But of course, if you do a longer road trip and drive your motorbike through Vietnam, you will see many places and many roads like this. So if you're planning to do a day trip from Da Nang and then you come back to Da Nang, then it's gonna take you just half day, maybe three or four hours it's enough while if you're planning to leave Da Nang and then keep moving north and then maybe spend the night in Hue and then continue in north then it's great because you just enjoy the pass and then you continue for an hour and a half two hours to Hue and you stop like there maybe for sleeping and then you continue all the way north for me this was the last stop of my road trip because I'm not gonna continue north I will actually fly back to Saigon from Da Nang and then I will come back to Vietnam another time and do the north properly ideally with a bigger bike as well and so I will plan a different trip just for the north because it's massive and I want to do it properly. For this time it was just the south and the central part of Vietnam and it was amazing. I definitely had the time of my life. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of the Haivan Pass here in Vietnam. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, any clarifications or you would like just to share your experience. Let me know if you have done the Haivan Pass or maybe you are planning to do it or maybe you just simply don't care. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.